Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this uh, video, I am sharing my learnings from Middle Discourses 77, which is the title of the discourse is The Longer Discourse with Sakuludhya Dai. The Longer Discourse with Sakuludhya it is also known as Maha Sakuludhya Sutta. It's a long sutta and uh, I've just uh, tried to, whatever learning uh, I can consolidate from this, I'm sharing this. So this uh, sutta is basic, uh, the link to the sutta is given in the description. You can read it at your convenience and gather your own insights. Uh, basically, this sutta is where Buddha is explaining what are the qualities that that disciples find in him that they uh, uh, that they respect him, venerate him, right? So the context here is that there uh, Buddha was staying in Rajagar, and uh, very well known wanderers at that time were around that monastery, which included Anubhara, Vardhara, Sakuladai, and other well known wanderers. And Buddha went up to meet Sakuladai and uh, Sakuladai was sitting together with a large assembly of wanderers and they were creating a lot of uproar and a lot of noise and everything, a lot of low talk they were doing and all. But when Sakuladai came, uh, just saw that Buddha was coming, he asked everyone to hush and so that you know they, he can interact with the Buddha because he knew Buddha to be a very learned uh, uh, person. So, uh, so then when... Uh, uh, Buddha interacted with him, he basically started the conversation that there are a lot of ascetics and Brahmins who follow other religions and they were debating in the discussion hall and discussions came up, you know, that uh, there are so many uh, learned teachers uh, like uh, Purana Kasapa is there, Bamboo Staff, Gotala, which is the from the Ajivika clan, then the Jain ascetic Mahavira, lot of such ascetics are there. But in all these ascetics, somewhere... Uh, like for example, Purana Kasava, he was saying that within his own community, his students do not respect him. Similarly, for for someone else also, he, he said like Gosala, that within his own community, people don't respect him. They, his own t the students, they, uh, uh, I mean, they, they don't respect and they, uh, they say that they know better than that particular. So then he said uh, about ascetic Gautama, that your, you are different. Uh, you are uh, in your community, I, I have come to know that you are revered and when you are speaking in your assembly no one even cuffs because they are even considerate that not to cuff though there are so many people so it's like when the ascetic Gautama is teaching an assembly of many hundred there is no sound of his disciples cuffing or clearing their throats that large crowd is poised on the edge of their seats thinking whatever the Buddha teaches we shall listen to it it's like when there is a person at the crossroads pressing out pure dwarf bee honey and a large crowd is poised at the edge. So basically he was trying to, they, they are like, um, uh, he gave the uh, analogy of like a pressing out the pure honey. This is actually the name of a book uh, on uh, uh, analysis of Majima Nayaka uh, uh, that I am uh, I am about to read in some time. So basically people are just wait so that let the Buddha's knowledge come by and we want to listen to it. So why is this, right? And he said that even when a disciple returns to a lower life, that means he came to a monastery and he took, took ordination, but it didn't work out for him. So he returned to his lay life. Even then he praises you. It's not that he has bad words for you. He says, he says the fraud is in me, not in the teaching. So then Buddha asked him, counter questioned him that, what do you think? Why people uh, respect me? So he said, I see five qualities in the Buddha. And now this reflects. So basically what are the five qualities? He said that he, he Buddha eats little and praises little. Uh, praises eating little. Buddha always said that eating less is better. Second, he said Buddha is content with any kind of room. Third, he said Buddha is content with any kind of alms food, content with any kind of lodging, secluded in places seclusion. Now this reflects that, you know, at the level of where uh, 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 Sukuladai was, you know, people only think from their own level, right? Uh, about even praise they think from their own level uh, uh, of what they think the qualities. So Buddha said, no, no, it is not because of that. Because then Buddha gave examples that it is not. If you say that I uh, uh, eat little and and uh, I praise eat, eat little, sometimes I even eat even more. So if that if that is a quality, then those disciples who praise me thinking that I eat little would then leave me. Similarly for other things he said. So he said, these, not, these are not the five reasons why people praise me. Then Buddha came to the five reasons. Then Buddha came, that, okay, these are the reasons. And there are many, many reasons that Buddha has given, right? So first, Buddha says, my disciples esteem me for the higher ethics. 
ascetic gautama is ethical he possesses the entire spectrum of ethical conduct to the highest degree right then my excellent knowledge and vision the ascetic gautama only claims to know what he does in fact no he only claims to see now there are were there were other uh, ascetics at his time who were like teachers who were like claiming anything that we know and see everything and you know we are all knowing and all seeing and then there were things that when they made mistakes they used to say no it had to be like this right then their response changed because if you say you know everything and then everything you should know no then you should not be making mistakes so buddha was different he only claimed what he was knowing what whatever knowledge and vision he had then buddha said disciples esteem me for my high wisdom he possesses the entire spectrum of wisdom to the highest degree it's not possible that he would fail to foresee ground for future criticism or to legitimately and completely refute the doctrine of others so even for example the nuns issue that happened right that uh, whether we should allow nuns in the sangha buddha very early predicted that this can cause an uproar because at that time the role of women was very very the status of women was very low so then he he kind of uh, for understood this whole thing that this can come and then he created rules around bhikkhunis and then when he allowed the bhikkhunis in the sangha he created certain rules so that that public outcry will not be that much more so that was the wisdom then furthermore my disciples come to me and ask how the noble so now buddha says my i gave the four noble truths and my disciples come to me and ask how the noble truth of suffering applies to the suffering which in which they are mired and swamped and i provide them with sufficient satisfying answer right so again buddha's teaching is not just only teaching teaching he also customizes the teaching to the particular problem or the suffering of that particular person helping him understand the noble four noble truths in his own context that is one more reason then buddha said i have explained to my disciples a practice that they use to develop the four kinds of mindfulness meditation now what are the four kinds of mindfulness meditation it is given in buddha has taught it in middle discourses 10 you can find that video on the channel it's a very very important discourse where buddha has said we should be mindful of four things body feelings mind and objects of the mind body mindfulness of body which includes mindfulness of breathing feelings various feelings pleasurable non pleasurable uh, uh, neutral Uh, state of mind which is angry mind lustful mind whatever mind and the objects the various things like the, uh, the spiritual hindrances seven factors that arise so this is what buddha says is the direct path of liberation that i am giving you right so buddha says i teach this then buddha says i have explained to my disciples a practice that they used to develop the four right efforts right four right right efforts it is basically mendicant generates enthusiasm tries makes an effort exerts the mind and strives so that bad unskillful qualities do not arise then four bases of psychic power right lot of things buddha is saying five faculties what are the five faculties faith energy mindfulness immersion and wisdom how to develop the five powers what are the five powers faith energy mindfulness immersion wisdom which leads to peace and awakening then they i have explained a practice that used they used to develop the seven awakening factors it's when a mendicant develops the awakening factors of mindfulness investigation of principles energy rapture tranquility immersion equanimity which rely on seclusion fading away suggestion and ripening as letting go so the seven factors of awakening then i have explained to my disciples a practice that they used to develop the noble eightfold path what is the noble eightfold path right act right speech right action right livelihood right effort right mindfulness right concentration and right understanding and right view right then eight liberations so i have taught them eight liberation eight i have explained to my di- di- disciples a practice that they used to develop the eight dimension of mastery then i have explained to my disciples a practice that they used to develop the four absorptions for second third fourth absorption then a practice they used to understand that this body of mine is physical it's made up of four primary elements produced by mother father built from rice and porridge liable to impermanence wearing away and erosion breaking up and destruction and this consciousness of mind is attached to it tied to it then a practice to create from this body another body consisting of form mind made complete in all respects then a practice they used to wield the many kind of psychic power a practice they used 
so that with clear audience that is purified and super, superhuman, they hear both kinds of sounds, human and divine. Then, a practice they use to understand the minds of other beings and individuals, having comprehended them with their own mind. Then, a practice they use to recollect the many kinds of past lives. A practice. So, these are all things which are actually coming from the various practices of what Buddha suggests, the, middle, the, the mindfulness practices. These all things are actually the uh, kind of uh, the products of the lot of uh, practices that the mendicants did. Uh, the practice they use with clairvoyance, which is purified superhuman. A practice they use to realize the undefiled freedom of heart and wisdom. Right? So then this is basically all the various, it's a very long discourse actually, around more than I will say 10 pages. But Buddha is basically in this discourse listing out the various things that Buddha is teaching his disciples. That is why the disciples respect and you know venerate the Buddha so much. Right? So I hope this video was useful. Uh, do read the discourse at your end and share your own insights on the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Namaste.